Good evening, everybody. This is the April 21st, 2022 meeting of the St. Mary's County Board of Appeals, located in the Commissioners of St. Mary's County meeting room of the Chesapeake Building, 41770 Baldred Street, Leonardtown, Maryland. I'm Dan Knowski, Chairman, and with four other board members here. Having met our minimum requirements for a quorum, we will proceed with the meeting. Public meetings are now open to the public. In lieu of in-person attendance, citizens may just listen to the meeting on their phones, but not speak to the board by calling 301-579-7236. And then use the access code 963-433, pound sign, or view the meeting remotely on channel 95 or YouTube. If any non-in-person citizen would like to participate by talking to the board when I open the meeting up to public testimony, please call the following number, 301-475-4200, extension 1234. When you call this number, Ms. Sherry Young, recording secretary, will take your name, address, phone, and email. In other words, this will be a virtual sign-in sheet. Ms. Young will place you on, in line on hold after I announce that I'm opening the hearing to public testimony. I will open the meeting up for public testimony after all the presentations and testimony by the applicants and representatives have been completed. For both in-person or call-in, you will be asked to state your name and address for the record, and I will swear you in. You will have three minutes to ask your question or make your comments directed to the board. Your comments will be recorded and heard by those of us in the Chesapeake Building, Zoom participants, Channel 95, and on YouTube. After the public comment portion of the meeting is over, the case will be returned to the board for any closing member's discussion and decision. Uh, at this point in time, I'd like to have the members uh, introduce themselves, starting with on my left. Good evening, Rich Richardson. And again, Dan Iknowski. Good evening, Lynn Delahaye. Ronald Payne. And our attorneys with us tonight. Um, <clears throat> good evening, Steve Scott, board attorney. Uh, excused from the meeting this evening is Wayne Medinsky, the vice chair. Um, St. Mary's County government support staff in attendance tonight um, are Bill Hunt, Stacy Clements, um, Neil Murphy, and our public works director. Um, and in the media room is Amy Carter, the uh, video media producer. And again, as mentioned earlier, in the Savage Conference Room is Sherry Young, Board of Appeals Recording Secretary. Uh, Before we start the hearing, for viewers at home, you will be able to see the staff and applicants' presentation on Channel 95 or YouTube as these presentations are being shown. You can also see all the documents that have been submitted for this case by going to Board Docs. Ms. Clements will now demonstrate how to locate and use Board Docs. Stacy. Good evening. Okay. You would have to navigate to St. Mary's County website, which is located at stmarysmd.com. Along the ribbon up at the top, you would locate the board docs tab, and that will bring you to this page. Oops, let's see. <clears throat> Sorry, I already had it loaded. <laughs> okay. And once we navigate there, we're gonna try to locate tonight's meeting, which is the April 21st, 2022 um, Board of Appeals meeting. And as you can see, it takes a moment. Okay, it's located here in the middle. And once there, we select today's meeting, and then we would like to view the agenda down here in the icon in the center. Once there, you can see our roll call, our agenda, and to access the exhibits and attachments, 
under the public hearings tab. You would press um, select the public hearing you'd like to see. And then on the um, left hand side, the years are highlighted and you could select one and it will take you to that exhibit. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, we will now hear case one, and tonight that is the Cheney Loveville Gravel Mine, CUAP 210026. The applicant is requesting conditional use approval pursuant to the chapter 25 of the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance for use type 82, extractive industry, with the rural, within the Rural Preservation District RPD zone. Um, we will now have a staff presentation. I'll ask Stacy and Bill if they will please stand and raise their right hand. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yeah. Thank I you do. very much. You may proceed. Good evening, board members. Tonight's public hearing is a conditional use application. <coughs> um, 21-0026, the Loveville Gravel Mine. They are asking for a conditional use approval pursuant to chapter 25 of the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance for use type 82, the extractive industry within the Rural Preservation District. The legal advertisement were recently printed on February 18th and 25th, 2022 in the Southern Maryland News. Certified mailings were sent to adjacent property owners located within 200 feet of the project property and a public hearing was signed posted on the property on or before February 23rd, 2022. The hearing tonight was continued from our March 10th, 2022 hearing. The owner of the property is South Star <coughs> Limited Partnership. They will be represented by <coughs> their uh, attorney, Paige Wyro. The property is located on Friendship School Road in Leonardtown. The land use for the property is Rural Preservation. It is also zoned Rural Preservation District. The site is a heavily wooded, undeveloped parcel. And an existing gravel road provides the parcel access onto Friendship School Road. The applicant is proposing a 168.4 acre gravel mine that will be excavated in six phases. Okay, we have a so we have a site plan and then the detail. The proposed mine consists of six phases totaling 168.4 acres. Phase one is 100, or excuse me, phase one is 29 acres. Phase two is 16.5. Three is 30 acres. Phase four is 41. 0.7 acres, phase five is 22.4, and six is 28.8. The light brown areas depict the areas that are to be mined along with the green areas, which are the environmental features to be protected from the mining. They are being protected by the earth dikes and sediment traps, which are depicted by the dashed arrow lines and then the squares. The mining project was, was reviewed by approving agencies during the May 2021 TEC um, evaluation. State Highway, METCOM, and the Health Department have approved the plan, while Land Use, Public Works, METCO, and the Soil, Conser the Soil Conservation District have pending comments. A mandatory mining permit and license is required and issued by the Maryland Department of the Environment for all surface mine operations. Okay, do we have any questions? Yes, one question. Yes, sir. You mentioned six stages. Are we asked to approve all six today or they go one at a time? From my understanding, all six. All six. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
You mentioned that there are pending comments from Lugum, DP, WNT, SMECO, and Soil Conservation. Yes, sir. Are any of those comments going to be an approval or disapproval of this process? Are any of the permits? They've, in order to get approved, they need to address the comments. <clears throat> so we don't know which way they're leaning I yet. Have, yeah, no, sir. Could any of those comments have the um, applicant come back before us? The comments were included um, in the staff report under the TEC items. Um, I don't believe there are any outstanding comments that would bring them back. Okay. So, so far, nothing. Yeah, and, and Mr. Bradley, that was consistent with my review of the, uh, the TEC comments. I think there are more um, in the nature of uh, complying with site plan related issues okay. than they are uh, uh, issues regarding the actual use. So of course, the use is permitted in this zone, um, provided that they can uh, obviously comply with the zoning ordinance. Hmm. I was just concerned they were gonna come to us and then have to come back to us and then have to come back to us. So. Um, I don't see that being the case, but of course the, the, uh, the applicant can expand on that a bit, I'm sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, you want to go through the conditions or hold off on it until later? That's up to you. Why don't we hold off on it until later? I think the applicant's okay. going to go through them, and I think if the board's satisfied with it, we'll, we'll accept that. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Wybrow. Evening. Will any of the staff with you be testifying? All four of them. If they would all raise their hand, we can get them all at once. Please stand and raise your right hand. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? And don't forget when you come up, please state your name and address and affiliation. All right. Uh, good evening, um, Paige Wyro on behalf of um, South Star Limited Partnership and, and Cheney Enterprises. Um, I'd like to give you a, a brief sort of heads up or forecast of, of what's coming. Um, with me tonight is Mr. Kyle Murray. He's the land manager for Cheney Enterprises in South Star. He'll explain some of the mining process. We've got Mr. Mike Prisbaki, who is the engineer for Soltes, who prepared a lot of the um, plans which were part of the submission. We've got Ms. Nancy Randall, who is a um, traffic engineer, and this goes, her report goes back to 2014. That tells you how long we've been thinking about do, um, doing this. And then we've got Mr. George Junkin, and Mr. George Junkin is the environmentalist. He did a lot of the delineation of the wetlands for the um, setbacks. Um, I, I, preliminarily, I would um, tell you that we, I see that there were five different comment letters, um, which, you know, despite the fact that there was some acknowledgement, at least from one or more of those folks, that Cheney's done a good job since they've been in this area since 1992. Their other site is about two miles away, which is winding down, which is the reason that they are um, going forward with this. But if you look at um, exhibit number five, attachment number one, a letter from Michael Bragg. You'll see that um, a lot of the homeowners who provide those negative comments are in this leg up here. And which, and here's a much bigger view, which is not currently in the record, but if you'll see it, it's this whole area up here. And those folks who sent you the letters of, of concern, um, that section is no longer part of this mining process. And in fact, uh, Mr. Murray recently had a conversation with Ms. Cook, who is one of the um, leaders, spoke with her husband. Um, he's had some contact with these folks from 2016 forward, but for a variety of um, different reasons, this um, area, which caused the concern for those folks is not part of the application that, that you're considering tonight. I don't know whether any of those folks are still gonna call in or anything else, they may or may not, but our understanding, it, at least generally speaking, in so far as those five different letters were that the removal of this area from the proposed area to be mined should satisfy 
a lot of the concerns raised in those letters to the board. But we'll see whether or not anybody calls in later. Um, also, uh, Commissioner Bradley, with respect to some of your comments or, or questions about, about process, um, you'll hear some more about it, but what I will tell you is after the Maryland Department of the Environment will not process the um, application for the mining permit for this site until this board acts. So, and theirs is review is, is primarily technical in nature to ensure that they're mining and reclaiming or their plans show that they're mining and reclaiming in accordance with state law and with whatever requirements this board may or may not st stick on them as well. E just as with that, there, we, um, f we are required to submit a plan to uh, St. Mary's County Soil Conservation District for the all the sediment and erosion control, which again is a precondition to the Maryland Department of the Environment acting as well. Again, that's primarily a technical to review to ensure that all the required sediment erosion control um, devices are, are put into place. And again, MDE, MDE will not approve a mining permit until St. Mary's Soil Conservation has acted. So it's kind of a, a progressive process which typically does not require anything coming back unless it's, you know, 99,999 out of one, you know, one, that one oddball chance. But in the 35 years I've been doing this, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen it come back once. Okay, thank you. So with that, I'd call Mr. <coughs> Kyle Murray. Good evening. All right, Mr. Murray, could you state your full name, please, and briefly tell the board what it is that you do? Uh, Kyle Murray. Uh, I am the uh, land general manager for Cheney Enterprises. I'm responsible for all of our permitting, uh, land management, environmental, uh, and preparing these types of sites for uh, operations to take them over. All right, and Cheney currently operates a site about how far away from this, this proposed site? 2.2 miles. Okay, and um, is is that site nearing um, its end life? You're gonna. It is. It is. I would say we probably have two to three years left in there. All right, and so will there? I mean, what in the two to three year period, assuming that the board grants um, approves a special exception, how is the mining at the old site going to be coordinated with the proposed mining at this site? Um, so it's our intent to uh, never have two facilities operating this close together at the same time. We would prepare, assuming the board approves, go through the processes with SCD, the county, and the state, get all of our approvals in place, get the site prepared for mining, uh, you know, get our, our, our equipment set up, et cetera, and then once mining is done at the other facility, flip a switch and be able to, we don't want two facilities operating at the same time. There's really no point in doing so. Um, and we don't want to have the added traffic uh, and, and, and activities that close together. So uh, it's our intent to prepare this site uh, in a manner that it's ready to just turn the switch on when the other facility's done. So uh, to, to, to your point about traffic, so uh, how many um, truckloads a day is the current site in um, the adjacent site approved for? 100. All right. And so, so when you say, uh, will you be at, you won't be increasing that up 100, from 100 to 200 if this is approved. Is that correct? No. All right. So it's, um, even though there is an existing approval for, for that facility, if this one is, is approved, there will be no increase uh, at any time above the 100 loads a day. Is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> So, um, you heard uh, Commissioner Richards' questions about the way the phasing, um, whether or not it's all or, or one, um, is, is, it, is it indeed all? It, it is all, but we mine in 30 acre chunks usually. So we prepare 10 acres to mine, physically mine 10 acres and reclaim 10 acres all at the same time so that our operations and our equipment are all compartmentalized. Um, if we open up 100 acres at one time, we've got to have stuff covering 100 acres all day. It's just not efficient. So we compartmentalize for two reasons. One, 
operational purposes, but for two, anything else that's taking place on the property, whether it's farming or wildlife or whatever it might be, we're limiting as li or we're uh, impacting as little as possible at any given time, which is why we just compartmentalize it so that the rest of the property isn't disturbed until we absolutely have to have it. Uh, and our goal is to, as we're opening up 10, we've got 10 behind us that we're reclaiming and returning back to, in most cases, and in this case particular, will likely be agricultural fields. All right, and is that the same process that you, um, f that Cheney's followed, generally speaking, with the facility that's down the street? It is, it is. Now, um, and you also are gonna have some uh, mobile temporary equipment on, on site, is that correct? That's correct. All right, could you briefly tell the board what that mobile equipment is gonna be? So, um, plants these days have actually substantially shrunk in what they're required to be. You know, you've seen old sand gravel plants that look like a transformer, they're huge, they're <clears> just, <throat> a bit of an eyesore. Um, we found that moving to a smaller, more compact mobile plant uh, is more, it's just as efficient. Um, we can move it around the site a little easier if we ever have to, we try not to. Um, but in this case, it's a very small, uh, it would be likely a brand new plant that is quiet. Um, and uh, you know, it would just need a water source and power. All right, and, and would there be a you know trailer office building that's movable as well? Yes, everything on the site will be mobile, temporary. Um, will be a set of scales there, and 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 a, and a scale house. All right, and do you, do you have the trailer, the set of scales, and the plant at the other Loveville location? We do. Okay, they'll likely literally be picked up and moved right over here. Okay, um, and. Um, as a general proposition, do you anticipate at least initially, um, or do you have any idea where you initially would locate um, the plan itself? Probably put it in the middle of the site, unless there was something that came up in our site plan designs that prevented that. The intent would be to put it in the middle of the site so that we have maximum buffer on all sides from noise, visual impacts, whatever. I mean, you, as you can see, we've got uh, existing vegetation that will stay along the perimeter of the entire site, but by putting it in the middle of the site, it even more so reduces any potential impacts to the surrounding community. All right, and then how do you, how do you handle um, dust? Um, we have a water truck at every site. Um, luckily, the processing of sand and gravel is a wet activity. We're not required to get an air permit. However, MDE themselves, the mining division, does monitor dust, and um, that is probably one of their biggest focus these days. Um, so we have a water truck at every site. It sprays the roads down all day to make sure that the dust is down to, you know, a minimal to none. Um, and like I said, the plant itself, uh, as the sand is moving through, or as the material is moving <laughs> through the plant, it's constantly being doused with water, washing the material to create the separate types of, you know, sand, gravel, um, and, and our various materials. So that process itself is is underwater. Um, and it, it's often the case from a, from a noise perspective that um, one of the um, common complaints is the backup alarms on trucks which you have to have by, by law, but what is there, does Cheney do anything in particular with respect to minimizing any impact associated with those backup alarms? We have completely gotten away from the, the, the beeping that you can hear for miles. Um, it's just, it's, it was a nuisance. We understood people's concerns about it, so we did some research. Um, a lot of Amazon trucks, I don't know if you've heard them now, but it kind of sounds like a, my best descriptions of barking cat and what they're designed to do. They're called white noise backup alarms. If you're standing directly behind the vehicle, you can hear it. They're designed to broadcast a noise to the people standing behind it. They're not designed to broadcast noise to the sides of the vehicle where you don't need to know that it's backing up. So um, from a decibel standpoint, it is substantially different and uh, it does not travel. Uh, and they're literally designed for urban settings. They're designed for, you know, a, a project in downtown D.C. or New York City, or any, they're designed to be used knowing that there are thousands of people living within 100 feet. 
So we've just gone to that on all of our equipment, all of our trucks, and uh, uh, we've gotten glaring reviews about them. All right, and, and so so the the end of the existing site has been sort of on the horizon for for quite some time. Is that right? That is correct. All right, and so when did you initially begin to analyze the need for making the switch from your existing location to to this one? 14? 14 or 16. It's been a while. Okay. So so you and and um, you heard me t uh, I'd point to the board um, the uh, exhibit which was part of the picture which was part of exhibit five attachment number one the letter from Mr. Bragg which had to it um, attached to it a site plan similar to the one that's in the board packet that Ms. Clements um, identified during during their presentation but it's different from the one that is was attached to Mr. Board Bragg's letter is that correct that's correct all right and so again I'm going to show if hold this up and could you tell the board how it's how it's different and how it was that you came to its current configuration so it's really been two reasons um, the first uh, as you can see there's a substantial wetland that moves here on the uh, eastern border of the property uh, that is a wetland we did not feel was worth impacting um, could we have yes we could have built a bridge and done some improvements um, that combined with the concerns that the community off of Jones Road had we met with them um, they had some concerns with noise etc uh, after having the discussions with them and considering what we would have needed to do for this wetland uh, we just made the decision it was not worth it uh, it was not worth being uh, a neighbor that we wouldn't want to have next to us so we just made the decision that it was best to pull it out and uh, you know hopefully that addresses the community's concerns especially the ones that live off of Jones Road which if I'm not mistaken all five of the letters that were submitted were from all right and so um, have you met periodically with these folks oh since the 2014 time frame I have all right and did you meet with uh, Ms. Cook, who again is, I believe, um, attachment five to um, exhibit five? Did you meet Great. with her as well? Yes. All right. And did you have did you have a recent conversation with her husband? I did. Could you tell the board about that conversation, please? Um, we spoke on the phone. I let him know that that area was no longer to be mined. Um, that seemed to relieve a lot of any concerns they had. Uh, I don't want to speak for him, but they seemed to be, or at least Darren seemed to be extremely relieved. And, um, you know, again, we're going to stay in communication with the community. Um, that's one of our, one of the things we pride ourselves on is the transparency with this. Um, we're going to be available. So if for some reason something was to happen on site that concerned the neighbors or they had a question about, um, you know, we live and work in these communities, you know, we're all local. Um, we do not want to be a bad neighbor. That's a quick way to uh, create a bad name for yourself and uh, not, not succeed in these types of uh, meetings. <laughs> All right, and so as a general proposition, could you tell, and this, with this I will um, conclude you, could you tell the board how your vehicles, the trucks are going to get in and get out of the site? What's the general proposed route? <clears throat> There's an existing entrance there now that we're going to utilize. There's no point in adding an additional access point onto Friendship School Road. Um, we will likely pave the first 150 to 200 feet into the site for multiple reasons. One, to get anything off of the tires that might be on the trucks leaving the site and also keep dust down so that it doesn't move all the way out to the road behind a vehicle. Um, and it's easier for us to keep that wet uh, to limit dust even more. So they will use the existing entrance as ingress and egress. Uh, they will turn uh, left onto Parsons, or I'm, I'm sorry, onto Friendship School Road and right onto Parsons Mill and out to 247 and either make a right onto Loveville Road, which is 
unlikely, but most likely make a left onto Loveville Road and then an immediate right onto five and go north, unless they're servicing local orders that are, you know, in the community. Right. And, and as with the um, 1992 um, uh, special exception grant as a general proposition, are your trucks staying off Maypole Road? Yes. And was that in deference to the citizens who lived off Maple Road? That is correct. I haven't got anything else from Mr. Murray. Any other questions? <clears throat> A couple. Um, so one of the concerns that several of the letters addressed was the increased flooding potential. What's some of your mitigation plans for runoff, things like that? I noticed you had barriers up on the maps, but could you go through that a little bit, please? So, <laughs> In this area in particular, uh, the, the cut of sand and gravel is usually 15 to 20 feet. You have five or six, five to six to 10 feet of overburden. Um, so at any given time, the most depth you should see is somewhere around 30 feet here. That in itself creates volume for water to stay in if it needs to. Um, and then we're, we're gonna have to go through sediment and erosion control drawings with St. Mary's County that are gonna require us to design traps and basins to support the drainage areas that we create. Mm -hmm. um, in general, it's a sandy soil, so what we do should not increase any flooding at all. Um, we're not creating impervious surface by any means. So um, the rain that's hitting the ground now will continue to hit the ground and move in a direction that should not modify the uh, flow of water in and around that area at all. Uh, to my knowledge, we've never had a problem with it. Okay, Can we, go ahead. I just wanna ask you a follow up, just <clears throat> to clarify your question, and I'll get into it more with Mr. Junkin, which is one of the reasons he, he's here. But effectively, given what you just said, I mean, the reason, one of the reasons that it's not flooding is because you're, build, you're digging a hole in the ground and the water's staying in the hole. Correct. Okay, and then you talked about the reclamation of the site that you're about to close, what are you doing? And you also mentioned that as you go through, you do uh, piecemeal reclamation. So can you describe some of those efforts? So in most cases, mining takes place in rural agricultural areas. Uh, it is always our goal to return agricultural fields back to the same productivity level. Um, We've got examples all over Southern Maryland that we've done this. Uh, it is, again, uh, the sooner we can get uh, a farmer back tilling that ground, the better. It's less ground that we have to worry about from uh, an erosion standpoint, less ground that we have to maintain. Uh, the topsoil gets stripped off and stockpiled. And as soon as we're done, we have to regrade the slopes per MDE requirements back to three to one, which a uh, piece of farm equipment can still navigate <laughs> and respread the topsoil and again try and get it right back into agricultural use. Uh, that is our intent of what we're going to do uh, at the existing site. And um, we have a site uh, in Mechanicsville that is going back into agricultural as quick as we can get it. So that's just been our general trend. It's the right thing to do. Um, and we've been pretty successful at it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Murray, um, what, what is the current ground cover on the property? Actually, right now, I think it's just wooded. wooded. Uh, it's got some, it's, at one point in time, and I'm not sure when, well before my time here, uh, and I've been here for 10 years, um, I think it was timbered and a small portion of it, but they may have done something on it, uh, but right now it's wooded. So once we clear it, We'll stockpile the topsoil, and then you know we can either put it back in trees or we can put it back in agricultural use. It's really we're open to it. Okay. Will there be any washing of the gravel on site? Yes, <clears throat> we'll have a small mobile plant that we're going to intend to put right in the middle of the site. Um, like I said, there's we've kind of moved in a direction to where we don't. Build, build big monstrosity plants. You just, the efficiencies of the small portable plants have gotten so good. Uh, there's no need to build these large plants anymore. So um, we'll just bring a smaller one in right in the middle of the site, process it there and haul it out. 
Okay. And how many miles is a round trip for the vehicle when it leaves the leaves the site? Well, how many miles round trip? It depends. It honestly depends on where the material is going. Um, some of this material goes as far north as D.C. Um, some of the material goes down into Lexington Park. Uh, it's really where the material needs to go. Uh, we don't have a set location every day other than a, a couple of our specific plants. But follow up on your previous statement of 100 trips a day, mm -hmm. if you don't know where you're going, how can you just say there's gonna be 100 trips a day? We're just, that's the most trips that we can have in a day. It's all based on market needs. So if the market only needs 15 loads that day, I'm not gonna force 100 out of there just to say I shipped 100. But on any given day, I will not ship more than 100. Okay, thank you. So I have a question. Back to the wash gravel, how much water will you be using a day? Uh, it depends on the size of the pump and the plant. Um, and any given day, uh, it's probably what's it, about 2,000 gallons a minute. So it's a, it's a large volume of water but we recycle usually 90% of it. So it's, it's just a big circular loop. It goes through the plant, hits the ground, runs right back into our ponds, or gets pumped back into our ponds. Um, so our net impact, actually, George can speak to a little bit more. We have a permit in, uh, at a facility in Virginia that we literally have to track every single day and every gallon of water that comes out and meet certain recycling requirements. So every plant, that plant in particular is not any different than any of our other sites. It's just a big loop because um, there's no, I mean, we can't impact a water, an aquifer that much. Uh, we don't want to pull water um, that, that impacts more than just being able to recycle it. Right. Um, Have you done any uh, studies or found out what impact that water that you're gonna be using will have on the neighboring, the neighbors? So, that's a good question. Um, drinking water wells are in aquifers that are usually six to 700 feet. Our water will never come from anything deeper than the hole that we dig, so 15 to 20 feet. So you're in a completely different aquifer for drinking water versus, this is really just surface water, you know, rainwater, hitting the ground and going into a pond that we would create. And then it just gets looped. So the drainage area from the ground drains, some of it drains to this pond, feeds the plant and just recycles it. So if we have a real dry summer, what happens? We have to stop mining and stop processing, which is one of the things we had to do um, in Virginia. We, we hit a drought and we went into what we called drought protocol. We ran the plant for a couple hours while we could, and unfortunately we just, you know, we couldn't pull any more water out because we couldn't recycle enough. So we had to meet certain re recycling requirements. So you said that you have 100 trips a day. Mm -hmm. Does that mean one trip in and one trip out is, you know, to go an empty truck in, load it, and go out, is that one trip? Or is that two? It's two. 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 So it's what we have right now up the street, and um, it takes about seven to eight minutes for a sand and gravel truck to get loaded and go through the whole process. So at any given time, you don't have more than one truck every seven or eight minutes leaving a site. It's not 15 at one time, it's not 20 at one time, it's not 100 at one time. It takes them time to move through the site, get loaded across the scales. So it creates a good bit of separation between every truck that's leaving there so that we don't have convoys leaving a site. And we are very, very adamant on making sure that our drivers know they don't wait for their buddies. They don't wait for, the, they get in their truck and they leave um, because the convoys are what create problems amongst neighbors. Um, that's not what people like, so we're adamant. You get out, go across the scales, check your tailgate, brush the excess, anything that's off your tailgate, make sure your tires are clean, and hit the road. Okay, at the end of, uh, you said Parsons Mill and Loveville. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make a left turn. 
Correct. Why would you make a left turn? You're going to Loveville? To get to five. Five's right there, right? Make a left. You go up Parsons Mill, you hit Loveville Road, make the left onto Loveville, and it's almost an immediate right onto Route 5. And Route 5 gets right. them back north. So you're going to make a right on Route 5? Yes. Okay, yes. I misunderstood that part. Yep. And like, if they need to go into Lexington Park, they'll make a, or, I mean, into, into downtown Leonardtown, they'll make a left onto 5. But the intent and the majority of the material on a daily basis, I'd probably say 70 to 80% goes north. Right. Because I have real concern about the um, the Amish community there, um, and that's like the main thoroughfare for them. So it is left turns are kind of funky, right there. I will say that all of our internal mixers and dump trucks have cameras in all of them, on both the driver and the front and the rear of the truck. So at any given time, we know exactly what's going on. They know that we know what's going on. Um, it records on braking, it records on any odd movements. So we've really made a push to increase what we can do from a safety standpoint um, with every one of our internal trucks. Um, and again, we've been operating down here for a long time. We're well aware of the Amish community. We do a lot of work with the Amish community. So it's in our best interest to make sure that they're safe and everyone operates safely. Thank you. Another question for you. I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, do you only use internal drivers or do you use subcontractors also? We use subcontractors also. So, um, you know, we obviously can't always control, we, we can't put cameras in their trucks. Um, we have no problem firing an independent driver. Um, you know, we feel that we pay the drivers a good enough rate that. You know, they stay with us and they stay with us and operate safely. And a lot of our independents have been with us for a long time for that reason. So um, if we get a phone call from someone that says, you know, red truck with these names on the side of it was speeding, they may get a warning, they might just get canned. Um, again, you know, we've got making sure that we're safe, our operators are safe, the community are safe are all at the top of the list for us. Um, I'd say our, you know, we have a great safety record and uh, it's every single day we are making sure that they're operating safely. Okay, thank you. All right, and so let me follow up on a um, few of those things. With respect to um, the cameras, you can also monitor the speed of your internal truck, so you've got real-time data on whether or not they are exceeding the speed limit, is that correct? No, good. I think it's a text message to our safety director if they hit a certain point over the speed limit. All right, and and have you are you aware of situations in where um, drivers have been reprimanded for for um, failing to comply with the speed requirements? Not only reprimanded, but they've been they've been let go for right. those reasons. Um, with respect to the Amish country, you you Cheney operates a facility which was before this board, which straddles the same areas county um, Charles County line. Correct. Correct. All right, and that's in the in the middle of a large Amish community. It is. All right, and you um, any problems with the Amish Amish community at that facility? We do not, and again, we have very good relationships with the Amish community. Um, we and, and in fact, in in that particular mine, the um, uh, truckloads per day of loaded trucks, the limit is is double what you are asking for here. Is that correct? Correct. It's two hundred. It's 200 loads. Yep. And in fact, most of the mines that Cheney operates isn't your typical limit, 200 loads per day. It is. All right, and so here, you're asking for 100 loads, and how many loads per day have you been, are you allowed at your current facility, which is two miles away? 100. All right, and so you're not, again, you're not asking this board to increase beyond what you've had in place since 1992, is that correct? Correct. Mr. Payne, you have any questions? Uh, yeah, uh, it, you kept mentioning uh, <clears throat> Route 5. So if I was in the Lexington Park and wanted gravel, mm -hmm. you'd get out to 5 and go through Leonardtown and all that? or That would be the intent. I, uh, you wouldn't go the other way? Maypole and all that? And no. Uh, 
Just where she was that. talking about, Picard. yeah, uh, Love, uh, Loveville Road and um, go to 235. We would then. go up likely and make the left to go past the state highway. What's the state highway facility there? It's literally directly across from our site mm -hmm. with a row, but we would come down and go into Leonardtown. I don't have a map in front of me. Um, if you don't mind, I'll pull up my phone and look at a map real quick just so I can give you an exact cool. route. Okay. Yeah, so we would. In the Friendship School Road, what you're thinking out to 235? Well, no, I was thinking the other one, uh, 247. Yeah, we're going to go to 247 to 235. That's an option. Yeah, I mean, there, you know, again, we really encourage everyone to stay on larger roads. I really, we don't want our trucks on back roads unless they're delivering to a home or a business on a back road. It's just, they're big vehicles. So if we can get them to a larger road, we will. Um, and, you know, it's always been our direction, try and get to five to go north or south. Well, Friendship School, no shoulders. Right. For starters, you know. So which is why we're literally, you know, unless they're delivering to Friendship School. Right. They'll, they'll go out Parsons Mill and either go, if they have to go, uh, I guess, towards Lexington Park, they could, they could hit Loveville Road. Mm-hmm and go that way um, or they could go back out parsons mill make the left on to five go south into leonard town okay. and then go into lexington park that right. way we don't want them on back roads just as much as you don't want them on back roads it's just it's not a good mixture well it can be inherently dangerous I agree uh i wanted to ask you about this when you use the term flip a switch Okay, so you are, uh, you've decided you finished mining at your other site. Well, then after you mine it, you have to reclaim it, don't Correct. you? Correct. Correct. So you're going to do that before you. No, the, recl the reclamation side of things, the dirt for reclamation at Loveville in particular is most likely on site. We haven't brought material in for reclamation purposes. So well, we try and keep... Yeah, my idea is it, it doesn't seem like a seamless process. It sounds like it's going to be some overlap. So you're correct. As far as I'm talking about shipping material out. So yes, there could be a dozer in there dressing things okay. up. All but right. as far as processed material leaving both sites at the same time... All right. No. Fair enough. Yeah. Thank you. We have we have two years after our cessation of work that we're supposed to have a site done and reclaimed. Okay. And from our standpoint, the sooner I can get it reclaimed, the better. One, I can get it back into tillable ground. Two, I don't have to pay the bonds anymore with the state. So I want to get it reclaimed and cleaned up and back to out of there as much as anyone else does. All right. So flipping a switch is, yes, we're not going to be shipping out of both sites. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, entrance on to uh, the county road. Mm -hmm. Right now you're saying you'll be using the, <clears throat> excuse me, the existing entrance? Correct. And what was the use that that served? Perhaps an individual home? Um, it's a big entrance. Again, I'm not sure what happened on the site, whether it was... As, as when part they, of your local process and site plan approval process, you will get approval from Public Works to make sure that the entrance is meets their line, line of sight, of all that, yes. And site distance and all of that? Yep, line of sight, yes. Okay. And again, we'll pave it so that it doesn't create mud tracking and those types of things. Leaving the site going, I guess, south, you will not make a U-turn at or a right turn, a sharp right turn at Jones Road? Oh, no. Unle unless somebody orders a load of material for the driveway. And then we'll, you know, we'll come out, make the right onto Friendship, and then make the quick right onto Jones. But Not a quick right. It's, a <laughs> it's, it's, okay. We have no need to go back there. It's a dead end road. So unless somebody calls and says, I need a load of material for my driveway or um, whatever they might be doing, building a pool. Okay. That's the only time we, that, again, that's the only time we go on small roads 
for that exact purpose, navigating it in a dump right. truck is not the easiest of tasks. <laughs> Are you also going to be taking out bank run gravel um, for we, construction? We Just all wash material. Rarely, and I say rarely, and, let, and, and it's not. It is in our best interest as a company to process the material. Uh, we don't. I can count on one hand how many times we've sold raw bank run. Okay. That's just that's not. That's not what we do. We process the material to create the finished products. Okay, and a follow-up to that question, and I think I heard it right. Uh, how many of your, you've done your market analysis, and you've done, you talk about somebody going somebody's driveway. Mm -hmm. What percentage are, are commercial customers compared to a private driveway? I don't know the percentage off the top of my head. Just a rough idea. Uh, I would probably say 20%. How much? 20. Okay. I th the majority of it services asphalt plants, concrete plants, larger construction projects. Um, you know, you absolutely, just like on the concrete side of things, we will, you know, we'll pour, we're pouring the bridge into Virginia right now and we'll pour somebody's sidewalk, you know, from here to the wall. Um, it's just, you know, it depends on the day. Uh, I would say that there's a, you know, a balance there, but. Um, you know, the bulk of it goes into asphalt, concrete, and larger road and construction projects. Okay, and one follow up, if you get out on five, what percentage of the trucks are going north and what percentage are going south? I'd probably say 70 30. Is that what I'm saying, or where is it? It's at the bottom. Yeah, 70 30. Say it again. 70 to the. Hang on. Page 13. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rainbow, how can explain Yeah, okay. <clears throat> the majority of them are going north on Route 5. Okay. M majority, okay. That's, yes. Okay. The majority of this material goes north. It services a couple concrete plants to the north. It actually, like I said, makes its way into D.C. Okay. Um, it services some asphalt plants. And the vast majority is going to a, a, a commercial company. Thank you. Just for the record, what I what I gave the members of the of the board was a copy of the update that uh, Nancy Randall prepared, who's who you'll hear from shortly, and it's an update to the traffic impact study. And page 13 was the uh, breakdown of the number of trips inbound, outbound, and what percentage will and to Mr. Payne's earlier questions, um, some of the outbound, ten, it <coughs> indicates that 10% of the outbound traffic will go up 247 to make that right-hand turn and head over to 235, but the other 90% is gonna head over to Route 5. Thank you. Just one, one last question. Sure. Um, I know you're land management, but, could, or maybe someone else can address this after a while. Um, what kind of revenue do you bring to St. Mary's County? That's a good question. I don't think I have the answer for that. Yeah, I'm not sure there's anybody here who can. So all, most of your truck drivers, are they local men or are they A lot of them are local. The we, we absolutely try and hire local. Is, I mean, number one, people don't want to drive 45 minutes to get to their job. We absolutely try and hire local. We have the best success by hiring local. Um, we have pretty substantial land holdings in St. Mary's County that we pay taxes on every year. Um, you know, we see it from the standpoint that if the material wasn't local, the community, the residents, all the projects within the county are going to have to pay more for it to truck it in further from wherever it has to come from. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's a, that's a pat answer we've heard before. Um, what about, um, if all the gravel is going to the bridge? Okay. So... I'm trying to get down to find out, are you buying the gravel, are we selling the gravel to you? Do you just buy it? How can I answer, can I help perhaps a little bit? Uh, Cause I think I know, so you have how many concrete, ready mix concrete plants in St. Mary's County? One, two, two, three. All right. Two, two. Two, all right. And so the, the are, are you, is your ready mix division one of the sand and gravel division's biggest customers? Correct. All right. So, and one of your ready mix plants is in Hollywood. Is that right? Correct. 
and the um, a lot of the folks are a lot of the folks who work at that plant, St. Mary's County residents. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right? And so you ship a lot of sand and gravel finished product from Loveville to your ready mix plant in Hollywood. Right. Is that correct? Correct. All right. And then one of your biggest commercial customers in St. Mary's County is Great Mills Trading Post, correct? For work on the base. So a lot of the, a lot of the sand and gravel that you generate in Loveville goes to Hollywood, gets put into ready mix concrete, and then placed by a local um, contractor at PAX, PAX Naval Air Base, is that correct? Correct. It stays local. It travels, it stays local. It's wherever the market needs it right. at the end of the day. So, okay. I mean, we've we've had a concrete plant in Hollywood. Actually, it was re relocated two years ago now. To the industrial park? Yeah, it's in the back of the industrial park now. Um, and the site that was right there off 235 uh, is now getting redeveloped as part of the uh, St. John project. I think everybody was not unhappy to see our concrete plant go from that site. So um, anyway, we have a new site off of uh, the industrial park and uh, it's been it's been going great. And, and I don't I didn't mean to short circuit you or anything, but but because I can't tell you what what the percentages are. But the reason I went through with him that is because it is not a pat answer in so far as Cheney Enterprises is concerned. It is in so far as a lot of that product staying local and benefiting the local economy. That is a fact. I just can't tell you what the exact dollars are. Okay, thanks. What's the life of the mine projected? Um, in this particular site, I think there's around 2 million tons. Um, we move around 200 to 250,000 tons a year out of the existing Loveville site. So that's 10 years. Okay. Any other questions? You'll be available for anything that comes up? Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Call Mr. Prisbaki. For the record, would you state your name and who you're associated with? Uh, my name is Mike Prisbaki. I work with Soltes in our Southern Maryland office located in Waldorf. I'm a professional engineer and associate with Soltes. All right, Mr. Prisbaki, um, could you briefly tell you, uh, the board, what you did with respect to um, this application, just at a high level? Sure. Um, our firm assemb assembled the maps and exhibits that are included with the application. We completed the application and did the processing, um, providing those documents to St. Mary's County to be processed for review. Um, in do you wanna hear about how we assembled, what information we used to assemble the? Sure, segment? just tell, them, tell, them, tell, tell the board generally what you did and then we'll get to the, your, to, to the um, detailed um, the, the, the site plan detail. So to, to prepare the maps, we, we generally acquire the best available topography for the site. Um, in, in this case, we had some boundary information. We do the boundary as well. Um, we take outside consultants information, such as the wetland delineation, uh, to define the mineable areas of the site, um, what's feasible. Um, we then determine by working with the client, the applicant, uh, you know, where the haul road, what, what's suitable for the mining operation, and go from there to prepare the exhibits and determine the phases of mining in, in chunks or amounts that are uh, appropriate for, for the property. All right, and then let's, let's briefly talk about process. You've, how many, approximately, how many different mining um, or applications you, you've been involved in your professional career? Shoot, at well over 50, 60, 70, probably 100. And, and, and so you heard what, what I told Commissioner Bradley earlier in, in, in the hearing tonight with respect to the process, the steps that need to be taken. Um, 
so so generally the the starting point is is a special exception is that correct correct and you in connection with that you prepared the site plan detail which was part of the um, earlier presentation is that correct yes all right and just so for the boards insofar as you creating the environmental features on that um, you indicated that you work with with professionals is a professional you worked with on this particular application George Junker yes okay and so you took his information and put it on the plan yes exactly he delineated the features our survey crew picks up all the flagging we coordinate with him and determine where those boundaries are to prepare that map all right and then in so far then you you need approval from uh, St. Mary's Soil Conservation is that correct we will yes all right and then you also need approval from the Maryland Department of the Environment is that correct yes all right and as sort of the the base plan for each of those applications do you use the site plan detail that's been presented to this board absolutely all right and so what additional information for instance with respect to scd are you going to overlay on top of the site plan that you prepared for the board i believe we do have soil shown but in creating that plan for scd we'll delineate the drainage areas to each of the low points those are the areas that are going to be suited for for traps to capture runoff again as kyle had said the mining in itself is creating a big hole so the runoff um, from the site is generally contained um, but for the initial clearing we need those traps in the low areas just in that interim before that hole before that mining um, is dug all right and so so you 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 design a um, site primarily to ensure that as you functioning or, or getting into the mining itself nothing leaves the site and and actually once you've started to dig the hole in the ground then at that point nothing is leaving the site because it's staying in the hole correct all right so so the problem from a sediment erosion stand, standpoint is at the beginning of the process yes that's right and and that's one of the re is that one of the reasons that you have to submit the plans to scd to ensure that the manner in which you're planning or trying to ensure that nothing leaves the site scd approves correct yes all right and um on the site plan detail you've got something noted as a stockpile in each of the different phases or at least a couple of those could you is that a what is that a stockpile of topsoil what is that yes that would be topsoil for for preparing the site for mining um, a lot of the topsoil would also be stored in earth berms or dikes um, that are in place in conjunction with that sediment and erosion control plan all right so you're required to stockpile is, is that an, um, an MDE requirement yes we need to show the general locations of those stockpiles on the site all right and then once you've completed mining what ha what happens to those stockpiles that topsoil is respread over the site to during the reclamation process all right and um, with respect to what you need to do at MDE to secure a mining permit, is there even a more additional detail than what is put on the SCD plan, which goes into? Uh, there is. Um, we need to show the haul roads, show the detail of what the haul road is comprised of. Um, a lot of it is information on the application that has to deal with the operations, just as Kyle had described. Um, for where the where the location of the wash plant may be um, we do show the buffers that MDE requires on the plan okay all right and you, did your office prepare the um, the application which was was submitted to the uh, uh, yes we did all right and if in that application you um, address address the um, facts which you believe um, uh, comply with or address the general um, special exception requirements. Is yes. that correct? Yes. And then you uh, also. Uh, excuse, excuse me, Council. D don't mean to interrupt. Uh, you said special exception a few times, and excuse, yeah, I just want to make sure the board doesn't get confused. <laughs> I'm sorry. It might be old age, but. Uh, uh, and, is old. Um, and I'm not a commissioner. Thank you. Um, and then you, in, in addition to the general conditional use requirements, you also in the um, report um, address the uh, specific conditional use requirements for mining. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Correct. And do you um, adopt all the representations contained in your report as your testimony? If yes, you like? I do. Okay. I haven't got anything other questions from Mr. Prisbach. Actually, yeah, and I'm not a commissioner. I'm just a board member. Yeah. I don't want that job. 
I don't think anybody. Yeah. Fair enough. (laughs) (laughs) So let's uh, flip the script a little bit. We talked about how this um, plan prevents the runoff going out. How does it impact the wetlands around the north and the east? Is it going to cause a detrimental effect? Is it going to change the wetlands, dry them out? What's what's the impact there from the operations? Uh, We're not going to have any runoff leave the site. There's going to be earth berms to keep any of the runoff from running into it. As far as the hydrology and underneath, that's, um, I, I think. That's Mr. Junkins. Mr. Junkins. Okay. okay. All right. Well, the question will be for you. <laughs> Thanks. Any other questions? No, sir. Um, on the plan, I guess this answers my questions from before. You have a small proposed entrance sketch of detail, and that's what you intend to do there with 75-foot acceleration and deacceleration lanes and all of that? Yes, and that will be refined as we get through the site plan process with DPW. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions from the board members? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. George. State your full name, please. George Junkin. And George, what do you do for a living? I'm an environmental scientist and I, I own uh, American Land Concepts and I've been in business for, I guess, 25 years now. Uh, my own company and I'm a wetland scientist with a master's degree in uh, wildlife management from LSU and a BS from uh, Frostburg State University. All right, and so could you briefly tell the board what it is that you did with respect to this application? What we did is uh, we delineated all the wetlands on the property. We hung flags uh, in accordance with uh, wetland 19, I guess 1987 wetland delineation manual. And I am uh, certified to do wetland delineations with Corps of Engineers. And uh, we hung flags at the point where the wetland and uplands intersect across the property, and those are accurately represented on the plan before us. Right. And um, so, so having done that, did, did you, have you, in addition to that, made an assessment as to what impacts, if any, um, mining will have on the areas that you delineated as a wetland? Um, we, we have a buffer around those wetlands. As far as the impact, uh, typically with a mining operation, we don't see any increase in sedimentation uh, because of what was stated previously. We're basically digging a hole. It becomes more of a depositional area than a, than a wetland, I mean, than a area that that's gonna sediment, increase sediment into the stream systems. All right, and so it is, it, what is the um, setback? Uh, 25. Right. Describe for the, for the board. That's, that would be a, a vegetated area between, the, that would be uplands adjacent to the wetlands. All right, and so when, what is, what is the statutory requirement? Once you go out and delineate the wetlands, is that right? That's correct. And then you take that information and you give it to the engineers, is that right? That's correct. And then the engineers take that information and draw it on a plan, is that correct? That's correct. And then the state law and federal law requires you to, once you've delineated those wetlands, to maintain a setback from those wetlands, is that correct? That's correct as well. And what is the setback that needs to be um, maintained from the wetlands you identified? That would be 25 feet. All right, and is the, what's the, what's the purpose of staying 25 feet from the wetlands? To provide a buffer so that you don't impact the wetlands and provide proper hydrology to the wetlands, so you n- no impact to the wetland line. All okay. right, and th- that, is, that 25 feet is not something you set 
Is that correct? That's correct. It's it's set by Maryland law and by state, um, by federal law, by, by by the Corps of Engineers. Is that right? Well, it's it's set by Maryland law. The the Corps doesn't have a buffer on there. But but they but Maryland law does. Maryland, but they but federal law requires that a, some kind of buffer be be put in place. Is that correct? Actually, no. <laughs> you just identify it for the wetlands, and it's up to the states to decide. You, well, no, identify the wetlands. This, the fe federal government doesn't have a buffer requirement on the wetlands. Uh, the federal government would verify the wetlands, and then the state of Maryland puts a buffer on it. Not all states do. But if you identify the wetland as one point, you got to be sure you don't cross that line. That 25 feet gives you a little more room not to be in trouble with uh, impacting a wetland. All right, so, so what, you, what you're telling the board is that is that in some states you can actually go up to the wetland itself and stop. That is correct. Uh, on, in, based on someone's assessment that going up to the line and stopping has no impact, is that right? Uh, it's, it's completely legal. <laughs> within the boundary. It's no Im no direct impact to the wetland. All right, and so do you have an understanding why the 25 feet was put in to, to? Yes. Why? Yes, and that is to protect the wetland even more because you're further away from it. Thank you. Got no further questions. Any questions from the board? Yeah, I had one. Uh, how many uh, separate and distinct wetlands have you found on this property? On this property? Yes. Uh, I would say uh, it, all the wetlands are attached, so it's, it's, they're all contiguous. To, okay. to be a wetland, they have to be contiguous. Okay. Uh, can so you, that makes it a tricky question. Can you point it out here? Which, which side? Um, <clears throat> Well, there's a couple of different systems that we have, but they still all are attached. So I would say that what we have here would be, I would say that would three. Why don't you look at the reference yeah. to what they've got up on the screen, George? What okay. Have, what's, you've, it looks like you've got one on the right, one in the center, and That's one correct. on the left. Okay. That's correct. <laughs> one on the right is, why don't you tell the board about that one? Well, that's a, a major uh, okay. stream system that, that enters the property and then leaves the property. It doesn't, most of it does not originate on the property, most of the water within that. All right, and then what about the one in the center? Then there, that would be another one that would obviously drain to the south. That originates on the property and leaves the property to the south. All right, and then the one to the, to the left. Pretty much the same with okay. that system over there. The same that, as the center? That's correct. Those would be considered more headwater type wetlands. What's the difference between a headwater type? Headwater wetland? would be where the the wetlands begin, like the spring heads, or or where enough water is accumulated to start a start a wetland or a stream system. And and so you went out and delineated the the limits of all three of those systems. Yeah, and furthermore, the the one. On the left and the one in the center are more stream systems than wetlands. The one right through the center or on the right-hand side of the property is more of a bottomland wetland type situation. Well, is, does that all drain into whatever McIntosh run or eventually or what? Uh, well, where does it go? I think the one, I think, is Burnt Mills Run runs down into Brenton Bay, and this one in the middle, I believe, runs down towards McIntosh Run, yes. Okay. All right, that's fine. Any questions? No, sir. Um, with with the wetlands delineation, did you have the uh, Maryland Department of the Environment review it, and have they approved the 
delineation of the wetlands? Uh, no. Do you intend to do that? That's not, not typical if you're not impacting any wetlands. If you're not impacting the wetlands, uh, we normally don't have them delineate it or re review the delineation. It's not a typical service that they provide. Okay. Fine. I, so, Mr. Junkin, though, to following up on, on, on that question, the wetlands, do you have an understanding as to whether or not the wetlands and the setbacks are required to be shown on the plans that are submitted to MDE before a mining permit's issued? Yes, they have to be shown on the plans, yes. And, and at that stage, it's likely that they will look at okay. those. Right. So, so it, I mean, you just be, the, MDE is involved in a review of the work that you've submitted with respect to the wetlands to ensure compliance with state That's law correct. under the permit. So it's not CART. That's correct. So there's another step, there's another level of review insofar as your delineation other than what's happened here, is that correct? Yes, when, when the state permits are issued, they will include that they're in agreement with the whole plan. Okay. All right, and um, you read, did you read the letter, the five attachments which comprise Exhibit 6? I mean, excuse yes. me, Exhibit 5. Yes. And d there were some concerns about um, degradation to the wetlands as a result of mining putting s sediment into um, that system. Again, you, you, you talked about it somewhat, but, it, but <coughs> generally speaking, is the conduct of mining going to put sediment into any of these three wetland systems? No. Why not? No, uh, because again, like previous folks have said, is that we're digging a hole, it holds more of the water on site, we don't see sediment leaving the site into the streams typically. Now, now in the very beginning when a site's cleared, that would be the only point of concern. After that, it's a depositional area. Many mines don't even have sediment erosion control plans because it's a contained system. Everything's contained and doesn't enter the waters of the state. That's all I have, Mr. John. Okay. I think we're ready for you next. I've got Ms. Rand. Thank you. Could you state your full name, please? Yes, my name is Nancy Randall. I'm employed with Wells and Associates. Can you use the microphone? Yes, my apologies. Uh, I'm employed with Wells and Associates. Um, our offices are located at uh, 1110 Bonifit Street in Silver Spring, Maryland. All right, and Ms. Randall, could you tell the board briefly what it is that you do? Yes, I am a transportation planner. Um, I've been employed with Wells for the last 26, 27 years, and before that, um, started my career with Anne Arundel County in 1976, you know, traffic engineer uh, offices. Um, so I've done both public and private sector work through the last 40 some odd years. And how many times have you analyzed traffic impacts associated with mining operation? Uh, I think this one's probably close to my 50th or 60th one. Um, um, and when were you initially retained to analyze the traffic impacts associated um, with this proposed operation? Um, the first time I was contacted for the Loveville mine site was in 2014. I prepared a traffic study uh, for that project um, this project in 2014. Um, we completed it in September of 2014. All right, and in September, as, as a prelude to um, preparing that report, did you contact anyone from St. Mary's County? Yes, I did. I contacted uh, John Groger um, and uh, Susan, uh, and I'm gonna forget her last name, McCulley, I believe it is, yes. 
um, at St. Mary's, uh, John, to get a sense of what he wanted to see in the way of study intersections, given the whole route that we knew we were going to have, where we expected the traffic and the trucks to go. Um, and then I contacted Susan with regards to um, development that would, might be in the area that would impact any of our study intersections. All right, and did you, did, did um, St. Mary's County staff identify for you the intersections that you needed to study at the time? They did. And which intersections were those? Um, if I can, excuse me as I put my glasses on, my apologies. Uh, it's going to be our site access, um, and then the intersection of Parsons Mill and Maryland 247, Friendship School Road and Maryland 235, Friendship School, Parsons Mill Road, and Maypole Road, where those three come together. Friendship School Road, Bishop, um, uh, Bishop Road, and uh, the site access. All right. Um, now, did, when you, the report that you did in 2014, did you, uh, what is, what's a level of service? Uh, in accordance with uh, St. Mary's County, um, we are required to do an analysis to look at how each intersection and or roadway link is operating. Um, and unfortunately, like letter grades in school, they go from an A to an F, A being operating really well down to the worst level or what we call in the industry forced flow. Um, which is an F level of service. Um, and so when we did the analyses in 2014, we looked at both the intersections that we were given um, as well as the roadway links in between those intersections and the road links as well as the study intersections in 2014 were operating at an A level of service for the intersections and a B level of service for the roadway links. All right, and so ba based on those results, did you formulate an opinion as to whether or not there would be an adverse impact on the um, uh, traffic, the motoring uh, public in, in, in St. Mary's County? Um, I, I, I did, that there would not be an impact. An A level of service is the best grade that you can get for um, intersection level of service. Um, and a B level of service is also uh, very good. Um, and uh, both those meet the county criteria for level of service standard. All right, and then sometime in, in 2021, you were told that, that Cheney was going to move forward with the application. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, and then so with that information, what did you do in <coughs> regard to your 2014 study? So what we did was to go back out, redo the counts. Um, we were in a time of COVID. Uh, it was last May. Uh, when we did the counts. Um, so at that time, we applied a growth rate for adjusting for COVID um, because traffic was down uh, in accordance with the county regs and requirements. Um, and so we added that growth rate and uh, we were um, redid the analyses just recently um, and ran the numbers based on that, brought the growth rate up in addition, um, one additional year of growth to bring it up to current time. Um, along with the COVID growth rate, uh, ran all of the analysis and the levels of service did not change. They were still operating at A level of service and they were still operating at a B. And I think it's sometimes hard to understand why it would still be at an A, but when you are at an A level of service, the cutoff is um, when you're doing critical lane, um, it's zero to 1,000 cars, uh, critical lane vehicles. And when you go from uh, a level of service B that starts at 1,000 and goes to um, 1,150. So it's just 150 critical lane vehicles to get to B. So there's a broad range or a wide range that you can satisfy that A level of service. Um, and all of the study intersections in our original report were operating well within that A level of service. There were none that were sitting close to coming to a B. Um, and so that's why it continued, even though we added the 
growth on. We'd done new counts. Um, they were still all operating really well. All right, and so so then you took that information. You took that information from May of twenty one. Mm -hmm. Updated your report. Mm -hmm. uh, updated it again for another year of growth, and that's the summary that was given to the board. That's earlier. that's correct. Right. That's correct. Um, one other note, I just want to clarify: when we do our trip generation for sand and gravel mines, um, they're allowed to have 100 loads per day. We always look at that maximum capacity of the plant, even though they may only have, as Mr. Murray had indicated, only 15 loads going out that day. We look at it at the max that they are permitted for. And that is 100 loads, but that's equal to 200 trips. Okay, so it's a, a, a light truck or an empty truck coming into the, into the site and it's a load of material or a heavy truck leaving the site. And when we do our analysis, most particularly for the link analysis, but also for the CLV analysis, we don't look at that truck as though it were the same as a passenger car. We apply what's called a passenger car equivalent. Um, and a passenger car equivalent for um, a dump truck is equal to 2.2 passenger cars. So when we do our analysis, and we're not pretending that this is a little, you know, uh, like the Lexus down the street or the Volkswagen bug or, you know, Mr. Smith's pickup truck. We, we look at this as though it's a truck, and so we multiply our number times what we call a passenger car equivalent when we do our analyses. Um, and that was done both for the 2014 report as well as the 2021. All right, and so, so your analysis is, is based on um, peak capacity for all the hours of operation. That's correct. Um, we look at, for the most part, um, a site like this will operate for the reasons Mr. Murray talked about. It will operate um, steadily throughout the day. Um, and on average, they're running about 15% uh, in the morning peak hour and 15%. So we're looking at, that's the possibility that they could run during that. Now, it, it may be higher. Um, or uh, during possibly at two o'clock in the afternoon, it could be running a little higher, but the volume on the road is going to be that much less. So what we want to do is to look at the maximum impact when the street traffic is as high as it could be, which is typically in the morning peak hour and the afternoon peak hour. So there may be a point where 17% of the loads are done at two o'clock in the afternoon because of some order or some, you know, um, demand for sand and gravel at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, but it's not, it's not gonna go above, to the best of my knowledge, and Mr. Murray can correct me, but I don't believe it's gonna go above that 20% just because the capacity of the plant to handle the number of trucks, the time it takes for cleaning, for getting the uh, material washed, loaded, et cetera, and getting out. All right, so, so uh, to, to the extent that you are assuming worst case um, during the hours that you analyzed at the, at the various intersections, what has been your experience um, in the 50 some odd mining cases in which you've been involved where that ever happens? Um, I haven't gone back on all of them <laughs> to watch what's going on, um, but it's, it's pretty rare um, that somebody is operating at full um, capacity. Um, one of the projects uh, that I can think of that has created a large demand has been the Purple Line. Um, and that's creating a large demand. That's a very large construction project. Um, you know, if you were uh, going to build a massive new highway like the ICC that went from Prince George's County into Montgomery County, um, that had a high demand um, as well. But um, it's a pretty steady business. Um, you think about housing communities, they need foundations. Um, new businesses, new buildings, um, it's pretty steady. But there are those situations where you might run that max, but it's not gonna be every day. 
I've got no further questions for Ms. Brandt. In your, in your experience in all these trucks, what are the accident rate? Is the accidents caused by the trucks and the drivers or is the accident caused by uh, intersection turn up? What are the causes of the accidents? You know, I haven't done um, an accident investigation uh, regarding truck accidents, um, so I, I couldn't, I, you know, I haven't had that experience with that. I've done a lot of accident analysis, but it's usually at an intersection specific to find out what's wrong with an intersection. Um, but I haven't looked at um, and done that kind of broad study of just truck accidents and what are those causes. Okay. And the second question, did you advise the Cheney folks about the routing of the trucks and the timing they should be leaving the, the site? No, that was given to me at the very beginning of the project. Um, one of the things that they know their business better than I do. Yes. Um, and so I needed to know what the tonnage was that they could get out of the site and then how long that processing was. And so through discussions with them, and I believe in the appendix of the original report, there's an email that lays all of that out so that I could go through and do that calculation to figure out what the maximum number of loads would be. Um, that the site could handle. And then from a routing perspective, it had to do with where were their clients? Where did they expect that traffic to go? Yeah. Um, and then the question um, I forgot to mention, we also included there are going to be approximately six employees on the site. So I included their traffic as well. Um, just standard passenger car coming in as an employee. Um, so when you, um, when you do this, some of the traffic is truck traffic and some is passenger car traffic. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, <clears throat> yes, sir. Um, one of the things I've read three or four um, traffic reports and nowhere near the experience of your 50 years, but I noticed that the Amish are never addressed as any concern or even mentioned in any of the traffic reports that I've read. How is this going to impact their community? Because they are never come to these things, so we don't really hear from them. But um, are they a 1.2 PCE? How, how do you calculate um, the impact to them? I understand the question. Unfortunately, the way we do our um, traffic counts, if there is a tractor that's out on the road or if there is a horse and buggy on the road, um, they get counted um, in the total volume. But we, we don't um, take that particular um, item uh, or person or vehicle and classify it as something um, different. Okay. Okay. We, the, the most that we can do with that is to take it as a passenger car. And my experience has been, and one of the reasons why the whole route was chosen the way it was, was they were being very mindful of sharing the road. Um, and Friendship School Road, as it goes to 235, is problematic. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, the best that we can do um, is to include that in our count, but there is no adjustment factor for that. Um, I think the real question is, and I think Mr. Cheney addressed it, is making sure that they've got eyes on what's going on and making very certain that their drivers um, and their employees are being totally mindful of the community that they're in. Whether you're in a passenger car or you're in a truck, um, you know, there is that potential for a problem. And, uh, you know, you just have to know the community you're in. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do you have a question from the board members? No, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. That would be the applicant's presentation. <clears throat> Can we ask some more questions? Can you? Okay. You certainly can. It's, yeah. uh, um, one of the other, one of the other questions, and I guess I guess it might have been partially answered, but have we done a, 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 an analysis of the intersection of the site with the road for uh, intersection site distance analysis? 
or stopping site distance analysis? I believe site distance is in part, but as I think Mr. Priz, Prizbaki said, the site distance analysis, the, the X cell or D cell lanes, and the need to put all that is the next step in the in the process from a technical standpoint. Mr. Dodge, I guess that ends it means that they they will submit an entrance plan, mm -hmm. and he's going to tell them whether or not they've got it right or not. So, which includes site distance as 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 well. Okay. Okay. Um, hours of operation? Uh, seven to five. Monday. And Monday to Friday and then Saturday? Saturday, seven to 12. Seven to 12. Seven to 12. And no Sundays? No Sundays. And seven to 12 on Saturday is just for maintenance of equipment? Um, I mean, that, that, that's what we've typically done. That's what the board's typically done in the past. Yeah, this is, this is Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. Saturday is, is maintenance only. Right. I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, and then for the clearing of the site, burning on site? No. No. Okay. We're not allowed to burn anymore. Um, MD actually would prefer that we stockpile it and it creates new habitat and regrowth at the end of the day. And that's MDE's? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I was, uh, trust me, when I was like, you don't want us to get rid of it? No. They, we, and when I say stockpile, it's not a 40-foot stockpile of debris. It's kind of wind road mm -hmm. um, along the perimeters, and they literally say it creates habitat for rabbits <coughs> and squirrels, and that is the direction they've gone, and we don't really have a choice otherwise. <clears throat> okay. Hey, I'm looking in the... Um Sorry, uh, the Stacy Clements environmental planner, the development data, I think it's exhibit, I'm trying to see which exhibit it is. But it only mentions Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. It doesn't mention anything about Saturday at all. And it's uh, item number four, or section five, property and case in information, item four. Talks about 100 trucks per day, Monday through Fridays from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Doesn't mention anything about Saturdays. That's fine with us. We can we can live with that. I have a question. Do you have any walk-in sales or is it all commercial? Like on Saturday, someone wants to bucket of rocks. Oh, I don't know. Um, some, uh, we can usually do that out of Mechanicsville. We have a plant in Mechanicsville. We have a plant in Waldorf that's open for... I mean, Monday through Friday, anybody can come in there with a pickup truck and drive across the scales and get material. On the weekends, if we can't open, we can't open. Um, some of our plants do have scales at them, but the closest one in this location is Mechanicsville. So they can come in there during the week. Is that what I heard you? Absolutely, okay. yes. And one other thing I wanted to add real quick, going back to, I know there was some discussion about the wetlands with Mr. Junkin. Before we are able to even begin clearing the LOD is established, which is that 25 foot setback. Before we can put anyone, anything on the ground, we have to walk the entire perimeter LOD with MDE. If any of the specific areas tied to those setbacks they are uncomfortable with, in the field, we pull those lines back to a point that they are comfortable with, they're relocated with GPS, and then that becomes our new LOD. So it's not just what we feel it is a physical we walk with a set of plans that has every single stake and we go to every point and they say yes we're good with this no we're not good with this and pull it back accordingly or leave it in place uh, and i'll elaborate on that a little bit i mean it it, it and i'm sure mr scott can elaborate on it as well back in 2012 when the state issued a legal or when the court of a, a special appeals issued a legal opinion saying that um, the regulation of mining was in the sole province of MDE. One of the specific things that they said was the county has no right to regulate setbacks from a road, from, from anything. And the setback in Comar is 25 feet. Now, that was um, a difficult thing for boards um, in Charles County and down here and elsewhere to, to swallow. But 
Mr. Murray's right, legally speaking, if MDE walks out and they don't like the 25 feet, they will sit, take it to 50, they'll take it to 100 if they don't, so, but at the end of the day, it's their, it's, it's MDE's decision and they do exercise that prerogative. And the same thing for for the buffer along uh, public road or, yes. or whatnot. Um, Houses, it's anything. specified as 25 feet right now and that's to be planted? Uh, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm right now <coughs> the requirement. The entire frontage, existing frontage, to my knowledge, is wooded. Or is, is 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 wooded across the front, so the setback up to 25 feet will not be disturbed. The only thing that you'll see is okay. the physical okay. road coming into the site. Okay. Um, but going back to what Paige said, as far as the setbacks, it's not just wetland setbacks. If and it's that's a state requirement, correct. If it's a house, and they don't like how close it is to the house, mm -hmm. they'll back us off of that accordingly. So, um, entire LOD is studied before we can put the first shovel in the ground. Good. Okay. Uh, two quick questions. Um, along that uh, stream and around those other two wetlands, is it required to put silk fence down? The state actually, from a mining division standpoint, does not like silt fence just because of the reliability of it. It's a constant maintenance. Right. So we usually berm everything, and the berms will stop the sediment, collect it, and then run it to one of the traps that are designed. And the state, I've, in my 10 years, I've seen them use silt fence twice. So you plan to put a berm? We'll put berms everywhere that we are required to put them. And how about... If I remember, you had answered, Mr. Bradley, that those holes are like 30 feet deep. Mm -hmm. That's pretty deep. It is. What Do you do any safety fencing around those for inquisitive kids that are walking through? We have to we have to grade them three to one. So three to one grade is it? designed for a reason oh, so that you can walk out. Okay. okay. And, and again, at, again, at the end of the day, a piece of equipment can't navigate this. A piece of equipment has to be able to. That's true. I never thought about that. Yeah. But I was thinking safety on kids or, if, I don't know, somebody's running through there chasing a. Our, our operating divisions are pretty adamant on making sure that people stay out of our sites. It is a huge liability. MSHA regulates every one of our sites. We, it's really important to us to keep people out. So. Any other questions? No. Yeah, I've got one, uh, and I think you'd probably be the best one to answer it. Uh, the, uh, since no one else has brought it up, you know, it was uh, interesting reading here about endangered species. Okay. Mm -hmm. How far is that site from yours? The existing site? Yeah, where this Patuxent, Patuxent, Tidewater Land Trust? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, but as part of our submittal to the state, it has to go through DNR, and DNR will do an internal study as to whether or not there are potential impacts for endangered species, and then we'll have to act. Do something. Do mitigation. something. So I'll give you an example. We had a site in Charles County here recently that there was a potential for dragonfly breeding grounds. And uh, the state recommended a consultant to walk with us, do a complete study of the wetland around our property to ensure that there was not evidence of these particular dragonflies that we could impact. Um, so before we started mining, we had to walk the entire wetland in the perimeter of the LOD with the consultant that was mandated by the state. It wasn't someone that we picked. We walked the perimeter, he did his study, found that there was no potential impacts, and we were able to proceed. But it goes through what's called the clearinghouse at the state, which I think is 14 agencies. And that is the opportunity for the state's experts to weigh in as to whether or not there's a potential impact. Okay. Uh, the reason I ask, uh, you know, there were several letters in here, and one of them was uh, talking about clear cutting down at towards 235 mm -hmm. how that caused a change in the river flow or the the flow of the water okay so 
I don't, all I'm saying is, you know, this thing is, you know, pretty much extinct. And I just want you to have an open mind about it. And, you know, not just, hey, I've got it, so forget I y'all. I can assure you that the process that we had to go through with the state to can ensure that there wasn't an impact on an endangered species was very thorough. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sure. Um, and it was time consuming, but we, you know, it set us back about six months. So it wasn't something that we had a choice on. We submitted it to the state. They said, you need to be concerned about X, Y, and Z. This is how you need to confirm that X, Y, and Z isn't going to be a problem. And we had to listen. So. We have to do that here. We intend to do that, and don't discount the fact that we have to. Well, you know, in my experience, you know, in the last 50 years, Cheney is pretty much a big player, and he does it by the book. We try that's, to. That's my own personal opinion. I appreciate that. So, okay. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No, but I found the it's staff exhibit two is where the uh, time Monday okay. through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. is. So that's where I pulled that from. <clears throat> We're fine with that. Okay. Okay. I will now open the meeting up to public comment. And I would like to remind the people at home if you want to call in, the number again is 301-475-4200. Extension 1234. So while we're waiting for some people to call in, I'll ask if there's anybody in the audience who wants to speak for or against this project. Can we check to see if there's anybody on right now? Yes, sir. And while we're doing that, I'd also like to remi remind everybody there were uh, five of, letters received, and they will be part of the record also. Board of Appeals. Ms. Young, do we have any callers for the Janie Love Bill project? There have been no callers this evening. Thank you. Thank you. In that case, I'll close the meeting to public testimony and open it up for board discussion. We have a, we have a list of gravel mining suggestions and comments that we uh, have we, we developed over the years. And um, some of them, after we see the case, the court cases that have come up, uh, will not be in our purview, but in the state's purview. Uh, I guess I could pass this around. I've only got one copy. Oh, no, I've got several copies. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think if we want to put some conditions on that, the the project I think may now may be the time to do that that one doesn't do that does it yes but one of the some of the conditions I think they are items that have been proffered during the presentation as we go through some of the ones that I have thought of are perhaps are a hundred trucks per day and again that's what was proffered by the applicant a water truck daily use throughout the site and along the hall road. Um, allowed on the site will be a small wash plant, scales, an office trailer, and it'll be limited to that. Um, all local and state agencies shall give approval. Restoration of the site will be according to state processes and state requirements. And no burning on site. So I think those are some of the conditions I might start off with and see if you all have anything else you'd like to see that might be added to it. Well, we've always had the, the hours of operation five days a week and Saturday is maintenance only and Sunday is nothing. And then we, could, we can include that also. Yeah, yeah. but by their, their application for the hours, and I'm not really a stickler on it, I'm just pointing out they only ask for Monday through Friday, seven to five. That's all they ask for. Do we grant more? I'd make Do that we, a condition. I mean, we don't really need to make it a condition. It's already in there. So with the hours of operation, if we go Saturday, it's going above and beyond what they asked for. 
No, they're going to have to maintain your vehicle sometime, and that's what we've done in the past. Uh, that's all I was going by. Okay. So, if we're going to make that one, I mean, I, mean, I have I, no heartburn. It's just well, which, whichever, out. whichever. Okay. In either case, I think we ought to make it a condition so that it's clearly on there. And if that's something we really believe in and we don't want them to change, we ought to make it a condition of the of the conditional use. I don't think we need to add in there about no burning on site. That's pretty much state law. Right. I don't think we need to add add that in there. And the the, the water truck on site, I think that's a, re, a requirement anyways. Is that a state requirement? Water truck dust control is dust a state control, requirement. Then so this, this, we're, we're specifying how to do that. The state says you got to do it. Okay. I'm fine with the water truck. That that's yeah. perfectly fine. Again, because that's that's what was presented during the during the presentation. We, we, we have one on site now. It will literally move to this site. So that's that's perfectly fine. Questions, comments, additions, subtractions. Um, I, I I think I want to compliment all of you for coming well prepared. I think that you've covered all of my questions anyway. Um, obviously, we all need the gravel. So I think that you have a have thought it through well. Maybe that's why you're so successful as you are. So because you've done this long a long time. Um, I, I don't have any problem with this the way it's written. Uh, I have no problem with it. Somebody want to make a motion with some of the conditions? Come on, Mr. Brain. If, if, you're, if you're happy with those, those are the ones that I mentioned. If you can read my scribbling. A maximum of 100 trips a day. Mm hmm. One. Well, that's, that's yes. I'd ask you to qualify that by saying 100 truckloads a day, because if you say 100 trips, it will end up in 50 and then 50 out, as opposed to truckloads. <clears throat> really, what we're asking for. And the wording in the request is 100 trucks a day. Maximum. Maximum. Just for clarity, say I mean it's it's. If from from an industry perspective, when they when they say 100 trucks, it what they mean is 100 loads. Right, but the wording in here says 100 trucks per day in item four. I understand. Right, it doesn't say trips. It says trucks. Yeah, it's the same truck coming in that now. Yeah. Do you want to put anything about Saturday and the conditions? Yeah. I, I don't mind. 10 to, you know, 12, uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Um, 7 to 12. 7 to 12, maintenance only. Mm -hmm. Yes. No gravel processing. Sunday. And no Sunday, but do we, sorry. Do we need to put it in there since it's listed as specific? Mm. All right. We can put the hours in there. If we put the hours in there, I'll be happy with that. I don't have a pen, otherwise I'd write it. Do we need that one? I think we ought to state that they have a s approval for a small plant, a scale, and an office trailer. Yeah. Because it, it doesn't show up on the plans right now. Okay. 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 I'm not going to make a motion. Go for the motion. Go ahead. Well, I'll entertain a motion. Hmm? Go ahead. I'll entertain okay. a motion. In the matter of CUAP 21-0026 Cheney Loveville gravel mine having made a finding that the standards for granting a conditional use and the objective objections of section 51.3.82 of the St. Mary's comprehensive zoning ordinance have been met. I move to approve the request 
for conditional use with the following conditions. The maximum of 100 trips a day. 100 trucks. On site. Trucks oh. or trips? Trucks, 100 trucks. That's right. 100 trucks per day. Maximum. Maximum. Right, yeah, right, okay. You say trips. I'm sorry, maximum 100 trucks a day. Water truck, uh, daily use. Small plant scale is also trailer. All local and state approvals. And restoration of state process and requirements. Your state process and requirements, yes. And hours 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Saturday, 7 a.m. to noon, maintenance only. Sunday, no operation. Yes. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Congratulations. Thank you very An much. An order reflecting the board's decision will be prepared by staff and signed by the board within 60 days. A 30 day period follows from that date. The orders that are signed. Uh, which any aggrieved party may appeal the board's decision to circuit court. The recording secretary will mail you a copy of the order when it has been given. Good luck and thank you very much. Good presentation, guys. Thank you very thank much. You. Have a nice evening. Yep. Okay. We have minutes from the last meeting, and I think we have a couple of corrections to the minutes. If we look at both the Bowles VAP and the Long VAP, and we look at the motion that was made and proposed in here, it still carries from the staff presentations uh, that I move to approve slash deny. And I think both of these should just say approve. Correct? Correct? Yes. Correct. Oh. Okay. And also on the other um, orders that we approved, it indicates that there were uh, the final resolution motion carried 5-0, and I believe um, that was should be 4-0 uh, to zero in that um, Mr. Payne, if I remember correctly, um, did not participate in those votes, so they should be 4-0. Other than that, I have a motion to approve the minutes as corrected. Make a motion. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Second. Aye. 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 Okay. Then we have several variance uh, orders to sign. The first one is Morris Point, and we had a double check um, on the wording in there, and I think we found out that as written it was correct, so I would need a motion to approve Morris Point. Make a motion to approve them as corrected. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then the next two that I have were the what we had uh, a week ago today. One was for the Bowles property, uh, and that was a variance. See which one that one was for. That was for the rebuilding, reconstruction of a house, or the reconstruction of a house and dwelling um, with the existing conditions in the critical area itself. Yeah, it's run on the, on the same footprint. Right. Yeah. I make a motion to approve it and sign the sign the second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then the third one was a variation, was a variance from the non-tidal wetlands. Um, for the construction of a house on the piece of property in the same general area. In the same general area, in the same size, but right. the, the, the move it over to the left-hand side from the right-hand side. Right. It's a very narrow piece of property. Right, 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 right. Take a motion to approve it and sign it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anything else for the good of the cause? When is our training? When is our training? I have not received anything from our admin staff about that. And yet. so we're, we have... We, we have, are hoping to have something before the end of June, though. 
Okay, and, and I would suggest if we're gonna do a traffic study training, I might offer that to the Board of Appeals, uh, excuse me, to the Planning Commission members. That'd be, that'd be nice. Yeah, I, I, I think some of them may benefit from that also. So there could be a joint group in here. Okay. Um, and then we talked about perhaps maybe wells and ground land, groundwater appropriation. And um, I, think, I think I understand, I don't know about the rest of the board, what the court case has done to mining pits permits and application. And maybe a little quick half hour presentation on that may help. Uh, I think that would help a lot. Cause okay, so that may be a third item to put in there. Permitting for um, conditional uses for gravel mining. Okay. Got it. You volunteering to give the presentations? Pardon me? <laughs> you volunteering to give the Who, presentations? Me? Not me. Uh -uh. One of them. <clears throat> I've that been guy. in that position many times. Yeah. <laughs> Any other? Anything else good for the board? Good for the cause? Yes, Next meeting is? Let's see. It should be May, May 12th. 12th. May 12th. <clears throat> yes, sir. <coughs> okay. Take a motion to adjourn. Make motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay.